Okay, so our walk with the Spirit, I think a much much needed uh, topic in the in the uh, world we live in. So, the world going crazy all around us, we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit more than ever to help us discern what and who is true and righteous. So turn to Matthew 22, 35 through 40. Then one of them, that would be the scribes and the Pharisees, they're trying to trick, trick Jesus here. So then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we take these commandments, and when we move into John 14, 15 through 21. If ye love me, this is Jesus talking, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave you. I will come to you. In a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. 1 John 3, 22 through 24. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So here's a little video. Explain a little bit better than I can. In this video, we will take a close look at the five things that Jesus taught regarding the Holy Spirit. Number one, teacher. In John 14, 25 and 26, Jesus said, All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. I'm impressed by the confidence Jesus had in the Holy Spirit. I think we need to have equal confidence. Sometimes we feel we have to do the whole job and that if we don't do it, it won't get done. Yet Jesus said, I've done what I can do. When the Holy Spirit comes, He'll finish the job. I really think that was a mark of humility on Jesus' part. We are learning that God expects me to leave some things to the Holy Spirit. If we think we have to do it all, it might fail. But Jesus said, I've taken you as far as you're able to come now. I can't give you any more because you can't receive it. It would be wasting words on you. Pouring water into a bottle with a cap on it is a waste. So he said, I'm leaving you, but it will be all right because when the Holy Spirit comes, I have absolute confidence in him. He'll finish the job. You need to bear in mind that you can only do so much. The Holy Spirit will have to do the rest. People who try to do it all get in God's way. Jesus never got in the way of the Father. He knew when to leave a situation. Some people only leave when the whole thing has fallen apart and there's no alternative. So they say, well, God's calling me elsewhere. There is a real art in knowing when to leave. It is being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. 
Therefore, Jesus said, I have done what I can, but another teacher is coming. He's going to do two things. He's going to teach you what I haven't yet taught you, and he's going to bring everything I have taught you to your remembrance. Teacher and reminder are two of the Holy Spirit's great ministries. The record of the Bible does not depend solely on the fallibility of human memory. The Spirit came to make sure the biblical authors got the record absolutely correct. He brought all things to their remembrance. We can rely on it because it is a Spirit-inspired record. The Holy Spirit also gave the New Testament authors understanding of many events they might not otherwise have recorded because they wouldn't have seen their significance. For example, suppose you were to try to describe any event that happened in your life even a year ago. Or suppose you had to get six people who were present at the same event to sit down and individually write their accounts of what happened. You'd hardly know some of them were describing the same event. It's not easy, but the disciples did not have to depend solely on human ability. They were promised that the Holy Spirit would bring all things to their remembrance. Number 2. Comforter If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. John 14, 15, and 16. Jesus was saying, I'm going to ask the Father to meet your need. When I go away, he'll give you another comforter. What does the word another indicate? There are two Greek words for another. One means different in number, and the other means different in kind. The word used here is different in number. The divine person, Jesus was going, but he would ask the Father to send another divine person in his place, and that person was the comforter. As the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is an encourager. He never discourages the children of God. You need to bear in mind that any kind of influence that discourages you is not from the Holy Spirit. If you sin, He will reprove you specifically and tell you what to do, but He will never discourage you. Many people have discouraging influences in their lives, and they think it's the Holy Spirit, but it isn't. He is the encourager, not the discourager. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 Courage gives you the heart to face all that life throws at you. You and I need encouragement in our lives, especially today. Number 3. Spirit of Truth In John 14, 17, Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept Him, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives within you and will be in you. John 14, 17 Remember that we are not talking about something that sinners receive. As Jesus said, the world cannot receive this. This is something that born-again children of God can receive. But sinners can't, because they are not in contact with Him. They don't see Him. They don't know Him, they don't understand Him, and He's not real to them. Number 4. Ever-Present Provider The Spirit of Truth, the world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. John 14, 17 and 18 Without the Holy Spirit, we Christians would be like orphans. Jesus was saying, in effect, I will not leave you as orphans without anybody to care for you, teach you, comfort you, or provide for you. When I go, another person will come. Through the Holy Spirit, we don't have to be orphans if we accept Jesus' provision for us. Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Verse 16. The word forever is significant. Jesus, as a person, had been with his disciples for only three and a half years. Now, he was leaving them just when they were getting to know him. But he said that the next person who came would never leave them. He would come to stay forever. That is the Holy Spirit. Number 5. It was an exchange of persons. When Jesus began to draw near the close of his earthly ministry, 
he gradually began to prepare his disciples for his departure, promising that another person would come to take his place. On January 18th, 1989. Place. At this point in the teaching of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was emphasized as a person. The essence of what Jesus was saying was that there was to be an exchange of persons. I, the Son of God, as a person, am going away. In my place, another person, the Holy Spirit, will come. John 15, 26 says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 7, 37 and 39. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Jesus was speaking about something that was yet in the future. It is not correct to apply this passage to the conversion of sinners, but to believers receiving the Holy Spirit. John 7, 39 tells us, Spirit had not been given. The word given is in italics in several Bible translations because it was translated that way by the translators. The original Greek writing says, the Holy Spirit was not yet. Now we know, this doesn't mean the Holy Spirit was not yet in existence, so the translators had to decide how they were going to phrase it. One word we could use is available. The Holy Spirit was not yet available. What Jesus was talking about could not happen until he had returned to heaven and been glorified once again at the right hand of the Father. So, although the promise was given in John 7, its fulfillment did not come until Acts 2, after Jesus had been glorified. In closing, let us pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we know that you are the counselor of truth, our help in need, and the one who fills us with the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, we pray this very day to come into greater communion with you. You so graciously work to intercede for us to the Father, but also to comfort us with your peace that goes beyond all understanding. Holy Spirit, please come. Holy Spirit, today we ask for godly counsel and direction. As it says in Psalm 37, 4, to delight yourselves in the Lord, so we boldly seek to do so today. Following the will and heart of the Father is our greatest desire, for we know his plans are best for us, and in the end, glorify the kingdom. Holy Spirit, please lead us by your wisdom, discernment, and kindness throughout our lives. Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the love lavished upon us. Holy Spirit, we seek and so earnestly crave to be in your presence, to feel the inner work of you in our hearts and minds. You so graciously give comfort, truth, and love. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this very day. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. So, for us uh, to live in this world today, I believe uh, 1 John 4 tells us how to act, and um, I'll have start reading that um. first John 4 verse number 4 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone into the world hereby know that ye the Spirit of God every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is come in the flesh is not of God and this is the spirit of Antichrist wherefore ye have heard that it shall come and even now already it is in the world ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. 
We are of God, he knoweth, God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is of love, and every one that loveth God is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to the, to be the propitiatory for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time, for we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and so, test, and so do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, whosoever con shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he, he in God. We have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we, have, we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in, the, in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect fear, but we have no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love? Love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment have we from him, that we who loveth God loveth his brother also. Thanks, Tom. So with this, the scripture tells us that we need the Spirit to uh, guide us through this, this world. So John the Baptist says in Mark 1.8, Indeed, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we need the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, the one who intercedes on our behalf, supports us, and acts as an advocate in times of trial. The scripture also says he gives us power, love, and self-discipline. He gives us a boldness to share the good news and power to perform acts like Jesus did. But even more, because Jesus has went to the Father. John fourteen twelve through 17. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever thee shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye you know, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Dead. <laughs>